Big news out of India as the Reserve Bank of India faces a very tough time at their crypto case at the Supreme Court in India, which is great for the crypto industry in India. New tools for Bitcoin Lightning, Ray Dalio comments on Bitcoin and central banks, and Ethereum is looking primed for some action. And before we start off, and look, I know I just shilled crypto.com in yesterday's video, but I really, really wanted to share this awesome update for everyone in Europe. You can now verify your address for delivery of the crypto.com debit cards if you live in the UK or in the EU, meaning that the cards are going to start shipping soon. I know that a lot of you out there have been waiting a long time to get your hands on one of those cards. Well, that time has come. And of course, if you still need to get a card, then click on the link down below and as a special bonus for using that link down below, you'll get a $50 free bonus in crypto when ordering a Ruby red tier card or above. I'll also leave a link to the review video that I did of the cards if you need some more information on the crypto.com debit cards and how they work and what the rewards fees and structures and all that stuff are like. So links down below for that stuff. Now, a quick peek at the charts before we dive into all of today's news. And I want to share with you the weekly MACD charts, which are a good indicator of the longer term trend, which we see forming in the crypto markets right now. Bitcoin just flipped bullish on the weekly MACD, although let's not get too excited about it because it's only a tiny little blip on the radar right now. See, you can just barely see it in there, but it is indeed green. It is indeed there. The last time that happened was early 2019 and we all know what happened after that. We had a great run in 2019 so this might be the start of something like that but time of course will tell because we still do need to cross and really break through that resistance at $9,200 to really get more of a leg up on this movement. And Ethereum just flipped bullish on the weekly MACD as well, meaning the two biggest cryptocurrencies are flipping bullish. The last time that happened for Ethereum in particular was late 2018, which set Ethereum up for a solid 2019. A lot of factors are at play, and of course this momentum could always just fizzle out and drop us back into the red. Of course we did have a false breakout for Ethereum a few weeks before the previous breakout in late 2018 that you know, brought us into that crazy 2019 market. But just before that, we did have a false breakout. So always a possibility this could be that one, but it's definitely a nice start for the year. I think really speaks of the, the strength that we are seeing coming back into the crypto markets right now. And speaking of Ethereum, more than 22,000 validators have joined the public test net for Ethereum 2.0 within just a week. That is an impressive amount of validators jumping on board for the Ethereum 2.0 testnet. Some more optimistic estimates for Ethereum 2.0 are also saying that it could be going live by late summer. But we have all seen delays on Ethereum before, so I wouldn't go holding your breath on that. In other Ethereum news, a community effort to get one million developers building on Ethereum has officially kicked off with the backing of the Ethereum Foundation, Consensus, and Gitcoin. Now, if they are successful in attracting a million people to build in the Ethereum ecosystem, then there will be nothing to stop Ethereum at that point. It'll be a, a force of nature in of itself. Ethereum already has the biggest developer community by far. This would be an insane consolidation of that position. And with the backing of the Ethereum Foundation and consensus, I think it really has a good chance of really pushing that forward. Lots of hackathons and funding different projects and stuff like that. So keep an eye out. So now on to the big story today, which is out of India. A major hearing in the Supreme Court in India has resulted in excellent news for crypto lovers in India and it's actually great news for I think the crypto world as a whole. The Reserve Bank of India has provided clarity that Bitcoin and other crypto assets are not illegal, which we kind of already knew, but the clarity, the clarity is definitely nice here. 
Furthermore, the bank admitted that regulating virtual currencies does not actually fall under its regulatory purview. If anybody is going to be banning crypto in India, it's going to be the parliament, not the central bank. They also clarify that the wider public is not restricted from using crypto for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, which is very important, and that the regular public is also allowed to trade cryptocurrencies without restriction. They did, however, confirm that banking restrictions at this time do remain in place, which is something that is definitely under their regulatory purview to say to banks, no, you can't do that. They control the banks. So there is that. Now, what that means is that any crypto related businesses operating in India, they will not be able to bank in India, which on the one hand will simply continue to frustrate crypto businesses in India. But on the other hand, it's just going to inevitably force more and more companies to incorporate offshore, to bank offshore, particularly in places like Singapore, which is just around the corner from India and is very open to crypto companies. It would be great for the RBI to actually take counsel on the crypto industry, you know, from, I don't know, people in the crypto industry instead of just issuing overly conservative mandates about what people can and cannot do with their crypto. What India really needs is common sense regulation to protect investors, to ensure security of exchanges and all that kind of stuff, and just really get out of the way to allow the industry to stand on its own two feet. Kind of something like we've seen with the Japan model for crypto. And we are very far away from seeing the Japan model implemented in India, so just, you know, we'll wait on that. But even India just getting on board the FATF guidelines would be a step in a positive direction. And the FATF guidelines, they suck, but that would still be progress, I suppose. Still, though, this is a big victory in the battle to bring crypto to everyone, everywhere. So my hat off, proverbially, to the Indians out there who have been fighting so hard to make sure that the Reserve Bank of India did not go unchallenged and it has paid off indeed. So on to the next story. Jack Dorsey's Square Crypto Division is releasing a lightning development kit for Bitcoin, particularly it is aimed at wallet and app developers to more easily be able to build on the lightning network. The toolkit will allow for developers to very easily integrate lightning into their own wallets and into their apps. And it will also allow for existing Bitcoin wallets to be able to support Lightning through this new toolkit rather than requiring the companies to build a separate Lightning wallet. This is putting just easy to use and useful tools in the hands of developers. This is how you get innovation happening. Give people the tools they need to build the things you want. Genius. The Lightning Network, when made ubiquitous and I think just really user friendly in terms of one wallet for all the solutions and lots of acceptance through apps and all these things, that's going to do a lot to lift up Bitcoin in the long run. And finally, famous investor Ray Dalio is talking about Bitcoin again. First, let's have a listen to his comments on cash. But, the, but the, also the question is, what do you jump into when right. you jump off the train? And the issue is... You can't jump into cash. Cash is trash, okay? <laughs> cash is that they're going to, because they're going to print money. It, we could, what do you do? You get out, okay? So cash is not going to So be what good. do you do? So what you have to do is you have to have a well-diversified portfolio. And, and first of all, you, you have to be global and you have to have balance. I think that you have to have a certain amount of gold in your portfolio right. or you have to have something that's hard. Cash is indeed trash, Ray. I love it. I love it. Now, the solution of central banks wildly to the problem of money printing has been to print more money. And no, central bank digital currencies are not going to fix the problem of printing more money. They're probably just going to make it worse. They just digitize the problem. And news actually broke today at the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of International Settlements, which in case you don't know, is like the central bank of central banks. They are all teaming up to explore launching a central bank digital currency, which I am personally not keen on at all. 
Now, Ray also had a few words on Bitcoin for us. Let's have a quick listen to those as well. If you want to buy gold, you buy Bitcoin? No, here's, <clears throat> there are two purposes of money, a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth. And Bitcoin is not effective in either of those cases now. Store of it, wealth? Store of, no, so because, the, first potentially. of all, um, it's, first, it's too volatile. Because of the volatility, you can't go next to it. Someday when it, you know, I would say Libra or something which has, has more stable value, has got more potential. But also, who's going to do the buying? Central bankers and others. What are they going to hold as reserves? What has been tried and true? Are they going to hold digital Bitcoin? They're going to hold gold. They're, that is a reserve currency. And it's been a reserve currency for a thousand years. Um, Come to the Bitcoin, Ray. Come to the Bitcoin. Well, Ray thinks the Bitcoin is still too volatile for its store of value argument and not robust enough for a medium of exchange. But you will notice Ray Dalio doesn't just count Bitcoin out. He doesn't call it a scam or anything like that. He's just saying, not now, don't think it's ready. Interesting. I think we have a potential Bitcoin convert on our hands here. We just need to convince him. Now to his second point that Bitcoin will never find its way into central bank vaults, this one I disagree with. I feel it is only a matter of time before central banks start buying or central banks start mining Bitcoin. And I know that some central banks have Bitcoin from confiscating it from hackers and stuff like that, but actually go out and buy Bitcoin in the open markets or to mine Bitcoin, that's different. When that starts happening, and I think that that will start happening at some point. In fact, I think it's so inevitable. It's not a question of if it's going to happen, but which central bank is going to do it first and when is that central bank going to do it? But hey, those are just my two Satoshis. You will let me know what you think about Ray Dalio's comments on Bitcoin down below in the comment section or anything else in the video as well. Always keen to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, the thumb, guys. The thumb. The YouTube thing. It's the thumb, man. Crazy stuff. Anyway, the thumbs up button. That would be amazing. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.